Look at this water. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so blue and clear. I can't believe they just let you do this. This is the yeah. coolest thing. After spending a few days hiking around the Porcupine Mountains and learning history on the Keweenaw Peninsula, we've headed about four hours east for one final adventure on Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Over the next two days, we're going to visit some of the Upper Peninsula's most iconic sites, including cliffs, the largest freshwater spring, a gorgeous waterfall, and eating an iconic food item. And we're starting the adventure at Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore, which has 42 miles of shoreline with 15 miles of it having colorful sandstone cliffs that give the park its name. And while the park is probably best explored by water, we're going to spend the day hiking the 10 mile Chapel Loop, which has beaches, waterfalls, and is one of the only ways to see the Pictured Rocks by land. One very important thing to know before visiting Pictured Rocks is that dogs are not allowed on most trails in the park, including on this trail. So yesterday we boarded Kona at a place called Northern Tales Pet Resort in Munising. That way she had a safe place to be and we could explore the park without limitations. We have a whole blog post about what we do with Kona whenever she cannot join us. There are a lot of different options we consider and we'll put a link to that in the description below in case you're curious. We're about a mile into the trail and the first stop is Mosquito Falls. We're three miles into the hike and for the first three miles you're just hiking through the forest but it's such a beautiful forest. The trees are so tall but they're not super bushy so it just feels super wide open. We haven't seen anyone except a few people camping at one of the backcountry sites so it's been just super peaceful so far but we just made it to our next major destination, Mosquito Beach which I think is properly named because I felt a few mosquitoes trying to come at me but I think after this once we get back onto the trail we're mostly going to be on the cliffs for a good bit and getting a view of the pictured rocks. Look at this water. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so blue and clear. Oh. And way down there, so we're being careful on this <laughs> cliff edge. The water here in this part of Lake Superior has been like Caribbean blue at times, and there's more white sand than there was in the Minnesota part mm -hmm. of Lake Superior. So you just feel like you're in the ocean, you're at the ocean at the beach. It's crazy. This this looks like Lake Tahoe yeah, right below us. The name Pictured Rock comes from the streaks of mineral stain that decorate the cliffs. These colors occur when groundwater oozes through cracks and drains down the rock face. Some of the colors you might see are red and orange which comes from iron, blue and green comes from copper, brown and black from manganese, and white from limonite. 
that late afternoon or early evening is the best time to see these, they say. But we're here in the early morning, so see what we can see. Flies here, biting flies, way worse than the innocent looking fruit flies. These are, they get on you. And they're, yeah, they're all over my yeah. leg. So this trail has been a little bit more forested than we thought it would be on this stretch. We thought we would just be walking fully exposed with views the entire time, but it has been pretty woodsy, so just an FYI. But there are tons of little offshoots, and if you see an offshoot, take it, because 99% of the time it leads to an amazing view. And we're at one of the more major overlooks along the trail now. It's called the Miner's Castle Overlook, which is different than the Miner's Castle lookout that you can actually drive to. But check out this sick view! This point is about six miles in if you go clockwise and from looking at the map it looks like we have a couple more amazing viewpoints coming up too. We made it to Chapel Beach and we're going for a little dip. It's perfect on a warm day like today. It's still chilly at first though. So this is Chapel Rock, one of the craziest things I've ever seen. It's just on a, this tree is on this pedestal and some of its roots are coming across to the mainland. That is just wild. All right, we made it back to the van. The hike ended up being 12 miles, which is two miles longer than we thought it would be. And it took us about seven hours and 14 minutes, which is also longer than we thought it would take. But it didn't take long because it was hard or anything. We actually thought it was pretty easy. It's just because there was so much to see. There were waterfalls and you had all the views of the cliffs, you had the views of the water. We got to go swim in the lake, which was so fun. We normally rush through hikes because we're on a time crunch, but today we just wanted to actually enjoy every single second of it. And it was amazing. If you're coming to Pictured Rocks and you're able to do this hike, you have to do it. There's just so much to see, but we're about to head into the town of Munising, which is the closest town to where this hike is, to try a very iconic Upper Peninsula food item. Oh, 
Ooh, this is a pasty. So it's a baked pastry that is typically filled with meat, vegetables, and potatoes. It originates from Cornwall, England, and in the 1840s, Cornish immigrants came to the Upper Peninsula to mine, and pasties were the perfect, hearty, one-handed meal for the miners. Their wives were able to use the potatoes and meat from leftovers and wrap them in a crust which were portable and stayed warm for a long time, or could easily be reheated by placing them on a shovel and over a candle. The wives would put the miner's initials on the crust, that way they knew which one was theirs, and they'd actually eat the pasty by holding it by the crust and using the crust as a handle. And when they were done, they would just leave the crust in the mine for the mine gremlins to eat, which was a good thing because they often had arsenic on their fingers. And so by not eating the part that their arsenic-filled fingers touched, they did not consume arsenic. Pasties are still a staple item here in the Upper Peninsula today, and there are so many places you can get them all over the Upper Peninsula. But the most recommended spot from all of y'all was a place called Muldoon's here in Munising, which was very close to today's adventure, so we're giving it a shot. Hey, this thing is hefty. It is heavy. It is huge. Yeah. All right, I'm a miner. I've been working all day long. I am hungry. We ordered the traditional, which is a beef, potato, and then there's some veggies. I see carrots. I think there's like a rutabaga. And rutabaga mm, ruta in there, I guess. <laughs> I'm not sure what that tastes like. But my first impression here, going into this, I thought it was gonna be like a chicken pot pie or a pot pie kind of a thing. But a pot pie has a little bit more liquid in there. This looks a little drier, but it, it tastes really good. The, the crust, I think, in my opinion, is the star of the show here. Um, it's just flaky and buttery and nice and crumbly, but it does, as you can see, it's holding it up really well. I can just hold it by the, the crust like the miners did, but if I'm if it's in, missing anything, I think it needs a little bit more seasoning in there. This thing is massive. I don't know how I can eat this in a in a nice way. <laughs> Ever since Adam said he thought it needed more seasoning, that was like the first thing I went into when I was biting into it. I was like, this is gonna be bland, this is gonna be bland, but I think that the vegetables and like the onions and everything in there gives it a very like, I don't know if natural is the right word. It's like they aren't throwing a bunch of random spices in here. They're letting the actual ingredients just kind of spice it up. And it's not the most like, wow, flavor town thing we've ever had in our lives, but it, I think it's a little bit more flavor, flavorful than I thought it would be at least after Adam ate it. But this crust is so good. All the veggies inside are just like nice and soft. The meat's super, super tender and everything's mixed in super well. So you get a bunch of different flavors kind of in every bite. You can get these with gravy, which might like spice it up a bit, but we wanted to try it just like this. We've never had a pasty before, so we really don't know if this is like what they all taste like or I don't know, but it's, it's hearty, it's comforting. Like on a cold day, this would be so good. Yeah. All right, now it's time to go pick up Kona and then we're gonna drive an hour south to the town of Manistique for the first of tomorrow's adventures. Our first stop of the day is Kitch Itty Kippy, which is Michigan's largest natural freshwater spring. It's 200 feet wide by 40 feet deep. The name means big cold spring in the Ojibwe language as it's 45 degrees year round. And the spring brings up 10,000 gallons per minute from fissures underneath the limestone. The spring is located in Palms Book State Park. So there is a $9 per car entrance fee unless you have the Michigan State Park Pass, but there is a free raft that will take you across the spring. And the coolest thing about it is that the passengers get to drive the raft as it goes across the cable across the water. We're getting our first glimpse of the spring and it's a little foggy out this morning. So we were kind of worried you wouldn't be able to tell how blue the water is, but you can totally tell and you can see straight down into it. So it's about eight o'clock on the dot and that's when this place opens up and there's no one here right now. We hear normally there can be like a two hour wait to get on the raft. We're not really, no one's around to even tell us what to do. We're thinking we can just go on the raft and take it. We're not really sure, but I think we're gonna try. <laughs> All right, we thought we could just jump on this thing. It's open. Never mind, there was a chain and we thought it was locked, but it's open. I don't know. I think 
think we're I think we're just doing this by ourselves. All Let's right. Do it. That is nuts. Oh, look at that. Wow. How to operate the raft. Close the entry gate completely. We're closed. P push down on the small lever. It's not staying down. Do I just I have to do them at the same push time. the big lever all the way to You got it. There it goes. <clears throat> Turn the big wheel. It's moving. <laughs> Use your muscles. We're going. Yeah. Are we? Oh, we're leaving. <laughs> <laughs> we're going. I can't believe they just let you do this. This is the yeah. coolest thing. You have like the power stance going oh, on there. It's because I have to use my whole body <laughs> to, to rotate this wheel. in the water you can see tons of fish there's branches down there that are encrusted in lime and then the coolest part i think is the water coming up from the bottom is just kicking up all this sand so it's just making all these different shapes and like cloud looking structures this is way cooler than i thought it was going to be I cannot believe that we had the raft all to ourselves. We got here a little bit before they opened. We were the only car here, so we booked it onto the raft. And then shortly after we got on it, we were like a little bit out, people started to show up mm -hmm. and oh, we ended up going a second time actually because about 10 people were waiting by the time we got back. And so we just let them all get on and let them drive yeah, that, that time. Yeah, that was the best part. We let them drive it this time so that we could fully enjoy, enjoy it. it. Yeah, <laughs> which was, so amazing yeah it was way cooler than i thought it was gonna be though the water's so clear the fish are so huge seriously one of the coolest things we've yeah. done since we've been up in the great lakes midwest area i, I we like we're just screaming like, we can't we, stop smiling we can't. i think we we're more, <laughs> this is so cool i think we were significantly more excited than anyone else here <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We are back on the road and our next stop is Taquamanon Falls State Park, which is a little bit out of the way, but we hear it's a must visit while on the UP. Taquamanon Falls is the second largest state park here in Michigan and there's a lot to see and do here but we're just going to focus on the upper and lower falls which are both a pretty short hike. So a phenomenon at Taquamanon. The water looks like root beer. This color comes from the tannins, which is leached from the cedar swamp, which this river drains from.
There's a bunch of different views of the falls on the upper section, and these are probably the most impressive falls we've seen since being in the Great Lakes. There's so much water. It's so loud and it's so wide. We will say though, this park is extremely busy, so don't come here expecting solitude. We're here on a Friday and it is like Disney World crowds, but can't blame everyone for wanting to be here. It is an awesome spot. As Adam mentioned, the waterfall is known for being root beer colored and they actually have a brewery on site at the state park, which is very unique for a state park. I think they brew four of their own beers here, but since we don't drink, we got their homemade root beer. So basically we're drinking the waterfall, but it should taste better. <laughs> oh, too big. Oh yeah, tastes like root beer. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it besides, it is so muggy out and this is so refreshing pro tip if you ever go to bucky's in texas and some of the other southern states they have a root beer that is very excellent on tap there that's an excellent root beer a little creamy got the fizz <laughs> not got the root got it. the beer <laughs> Next up, we're checking out Lower Falls, which is in a different area than Upper Falls, and you can hike between the two. It's about four miles one way, and they have a paid shuttle that'll take you back to your car if you don't feel like doing the round trip hike. But we wanted to take it a little easy today, so we're just gonna explore some of the shorter trails around this area of the park. One thing we thought was really awesome about this park was they have a free reservable power track chair, which is basically an electronic wheelchair with these giant tank like treads on it that allows the user to go through uh, snow, mud, and up to eight inches of water. We think it's really cool. They're trying to make the parks as accessible to as many people as possible. We'll put a link in the description below to how you can reserve this if you're in need of something like that when you visit this park. Our next adventure here in Michigan is taking us to the Lower Peninsula, and to get there, we get to drive across the famous Mackinac Bridge. It was one of the four longest suspension bridges in the world for over 40 years, but other bridges have surpassed it over the years. It's now the 24th longest suspension bridge in the world and the third longest suspension bridge in North America with a main span length of 3,799 feet. But if you measure it from the bent pier to bent pier, it's 7,400 feet, which makes it the longest in the Western Hemisphere. So there is a fee to go across the bridge, and for a car it's $4, but for an RV it's $5 per axle. We weren't sure what they'd consider the van, but they considered it a car! Four dollars! Woo! <laughs> Alright, we're about to enter the bridge. It is a suspension bridge, so it can sway a bit in the wind, and they actually had a program where someone could drive your car across for you if you didn't feel comfortable. It's suspended due to COVID, not sure when it'll come back, but if you aren't feeling comfortable driving the bridge, that could be an option for you again in the future, hopefully, maybe. <laughs> Thank you. 
We have officially left the Upper Peninsula of Michigan and we are now in the Lower Peninsula. We're gonna spend the next few days just working in the area, maybe do a little bit of exploring on our own. But for our next adventure, we're visiting the number one spot we wanted to visit while here in the Lower Peninsula. What are, we're, Sleeping Bear Dunes. I forgot where we were going, <laughs> dang it. Sleeping Bear Dunes. Pasties, right? Pasties. Yep. I want to say pasties. Pasties, it rhymes with nasty, not tasty, which is what I read online. That doesn't mean that it's nasty and not tasty. That's just what I read. Oh no. Oh, oh. <laughs> I never know what to do that is. <laughs> He's going to say it. Oh. <laughs> Back and act. No. <laughs> Michigan Pro Tip. They have a website called michigan.gov which has a page on it that has pronunciations of all of the words in Michigan, all the places, just words that are common here, like pasties and the Mackinac Bridge. It's not Mackinac Bridge. So we highly recommend checking out that website if you're visiting so you can try to sound like you know what you're talking about. And hopefully they're right. I'm assuming they are. 